So if you lower the suspension on your car, you've got lower centre of gravity. Better angling, of course. Is that right? Well, it's not strictly true. So in this video, I'm going to help you to understand why you should not lower your car. Right, to say you shouldn't lower your car is a bit of a bold statement and is not 100% true, but you definitely should learn some suspension basics really before you lower your car and explain why. Now this is not engineering explained, but I have got a whiteboard and my drawings suck. But I'm going to try and get you to understand why you should be careful when you lower your car. So what we're going to talk about a bit is roll centre. Now a lot of people would never have heard of that because everybody thinks when you lower a car, all you're concerned about is your centre of gravity, right? Well that's how I used to think. But Many years ago, I learned that there's something far more important than the centre of gravity, and that's your roll centre. Now, there's videos on the internet that <coughs> use whiteboards, diagrams, and everything, and explain it far better than me. So, I'll put links in the description of videos that will explain how roll centre works, bump steer, and what effect lowering the car can have on your suspension and geometry. Why I'm making this video is for two reasons. I'm going to include a few things in this video that don't really get covered in other videos I've watched and also because I'm going to be fitting coilovers to my car which if you're here for the first time is a Fiesta ST I'm doing for the track when I come to put the coilovers on I don't want to be giving them all this information then while I'm trying to set my ride out. So if I do a separate video I can just refer back to this and make quick mentions. Right, so quickly, when a manufacturer makes a car, they set the ride height, especially if it's a, in a sports model, they have tuned the suspension characteristics and the angle of your wishbones and suspension components is all set to specific height to give what could be close to the best handling you're going to get in your car. So if you slam your car down, you've then messed up all the angles and geometry and this can have big problems, especially in my car. The front suspension is McPherson Strut. Um, if you get the geometry wrong on that, then you're going to run into understeer issues and I'm actually suffering that at the moment and I've realised my suspension geometry is a little bit out of whack running the mountain springs. And this is why. If the whole aspect of roll centre gets too confusing for you there's one basic way of looking at whether you've got your suspension right or whether you've got it wrong so i'll put a little um shot up on the screen here now right so if you're looking at this picture now you can see on the top see the angle of the wishbone it's um, got a slight downward tilt from the subframe mountain out to the wheel um that's got a tick by it because it shows that's good if we look at the one at the bottom, it's got an X by it, shows the angle is running up bill from the subframe point out to the wheel. So basically, if you lower your car and your wishbone appears to be running from the subframe out to the wheel at an up bill angle, your roll centre is going to be pretty much ruined and you're going to suffer understeer problems. Now, realistically, in a road car, if you're only driving on the road, it's not going to matter too much. Most of you who well, don't take your cars on track, you probably may even disagree with me. When you get on track, then you see the failings of a car's handling. So if you mess it up, the car just doesn't just doesn't work right. So, this is a front mock-up by done, right? So you've got your suspension here, this is a wheel. This is your arm, subframe arm. Now I'm pretty pants at drawing. So hopefully you have watched your videos, you understand your theoretical roll center is around about there. Your centre of gravity would be there. Ideally, you want your roll centre above ground. So when you're looking at angle of a of the suspension wishbone on your car, you could look at yours and you could think, right, that looks fine. But what I found is no videos actually show you how to accurately get a measurement of your wishbone arm. So this is why I've done this drawing here. Right. So what I've drawn is the wishbone. This part is the wishbone. This is your ball joint that would then go to your hub. So I've drawn this black line here, which we can imagine is the, is the floor, is your level line. Now if you were to look at this angle of the arm, because you'll find most will taper, they narrow here, they widen there. So you look at that arm and you think, well, the gap from there to there and there to there makes it look like I'm running uphill. 
so my arm is out of whack, which will mean I'll have poor suspension on there. But what you need to remember is your measuring point is from where your wishbone bolts to your subframe. It's the centre line there, and then it's the centre line of the actual ball joint. Now it's not always easy to find where that is, so you're going to have to be a little bit creative how you measure it. But if you was to draw a line across there, you find that would be much closer to parallel. Like I say, I've just thrown this drawing together. I'm definitely no artist. So that would help you to understand that all the videos I've watched, nothing ever explains this. That the centre of the ball joint to the centre of the bolt is where you take your reference from. So if you see any roll centre correction kits that space that ball joint up and bring the arm down, then that's a waste of time. To correct your roll centre, you have to lower the ball joint and this point you your centre line. So you can lower your car, that's another point. Some cars, you can lower them and they will have a roll centre and bump steer correction kits, which will mean you can lower that arm, you can lo lower the car down, it'll put your arm at the, see, let's go to this drawing. You lower your car, it's put your arm to a dodgy angle like that. Then you buy a ro an extended ball joint and then it'll put your arm back down to a more desirable position. So what that will do is the, it's the perfect combination of getting your, your centre of gravity and your roll centre close together. Because if you can do that, then great, lower your car and get the correction kits. Now, I'm not going to go into bump steer too much, that, but just basically bump steer is where if you lower it, you change your geometry angles of your suspension and as the suspension travels up and down it's adding toe to your wheels because you're working out of the parameters of what the manufacturer has designed so go research some videos on on um, bump steer so when you look at the most desirable thing you want you want a low center of gravity you do and you want the roll center to be up above flow level now if you've watched the videos on calculating that it's quite straightforward but I'm going to leave it to the videos I'll probably put in the description to help you to understand. But the closer you can get them two together, the less your car will roll. You've probably seen some of the videos and they'll say the car will roll less if you get your centre of gravity and your roll centre closer together. Because it's them two points you can visualise it like this. If you say, for instance, um, with this pen. now. My fingers are all in here, which is your, at the point of what we call the roll center. And then there's your center of gravity. So as you go around the corner, the car wants to roll. So the forces are acting on there. It takes quite a bit of force for me to bend that because the distance between your roll center and your center of gravity is quite small, just like in that picture. But if you get it really wrong and they're far apart, then say, here's your roll center, Here's your center of gravity, and there's a big distance between them. It doesn't take very much for me to make that tip over, and it's like a leverage, like putting an extension on a on a ratchet, so your car will want to tip over more. So that's why you want your roll center and center of gravity closer together. So basically, that is it. Hopefully, if you watch some of the other videos that give you better explanations than me, add that with these little bits of extra info I've given you, and hopefully you'll have a much better rounded understanding of it. Now, I know genius, but if you're interested in sticking around this far in the video, I'll explain to you how I found out um, about Roll Center. So go back about seven years ago. Um, me, my brother, and a couple of friends got quite, I would say serious, but we started doing a lot more track days, and we had track day cars. So we put coilovers on David's car, my brother's car, Civic, and I was none the wiser then um, to suspension. None of us were. We thought lower centre of gravity. Car handles better, didn't it? Slammed it right down on his ten coilovers. Takes it out on track. It was so low. He was having a problem. Every time he hit a curb or a bump, it was bouncing out the gear. So he comes back in and said, I can't keep it in gear. So it had never done it before. We assumed it must be because the suspension was so low. So we raised the suspension. It cured the gears jumping out. But as a side effect, the car started handling better. Now he wasn't happy with the handling before. In fact, he was finding it terrible. But the car started handling better. So 
that was quite confusing to me at the time um, I think later on he raises suspension some more so that got me researching suspension and the geometry and when I stumbled across roll center it was like poof, brain explosion because you do think lower center of gravity you get better handling but roll center is far more important than your center of gravity so if you are serious about the handling on your car and you want to take it on track and you want to get the best handling you can definitely pay attention to the angle of your your wishbone it's the simplest way to do you can get into all the measurements of roll center and that can confuse most people it can confuse me i ain't no genius i stick to the basics and i concentrate on what is the the angle and geometry of my um low control arm one thing to add as well when you watch the videos on how they'll be um giving you all the measurements blah blah lines from measuring from all sitting distances to get your roll center um on a mcpherson strut basically at the top here you go 90 degrees away will be one of the geometry lines you'll be following so if you add camber through your um strut with a camber top mount you then raise your roll center which is something i'm going to be adding camber but it'll also help me with my roll center anyway i've waffled quite a bit you might i may have confused you more than i've helped do i hope that's not the case so i'm gonna find some good videos i'm gonna put them in the link down below and to engineer and explain it's got a good video on roll center maybe you want to go and watch him so there you are when i come to fit my coil overs now in a couple of weeks time then i'm probably going to say come back watch this video i will be showing how i do some of the measurements on the wishbone i'm going to include some of that in the video but rather than giving you a uh, information overload then here it is this is it so don't lower suspension on your cars people not if you see this about handling right thanks for watching this video i'll see you on the next one bye